Uh, the virtus formativa is a shaping force that is responsible for crucial dynamics in the formation of a living being. Um, this notion or originated in the second century uh, in the medical works of Galen, but during the following centuries went through several theoretical modification. Um, what is the nature of this power? It is conveyed by the seed. Does it have a ne casual nexus with the soul of the embryo? In answering to this question, medieval thinkers, both from Arabic and Latin traditions, discuss at length the nature of this power. Uh, among 13th century authors, Albert the Great gives this uh, notion an extensive theoretical and original treatment. Uh, Albert does not make use of this notion exclusively to explain the human embryogenesis, but also to account for the formation of inanimate things like minerals and stones. And uh, I saw so for this reason, I wonder what kind of uh, informative power Albert has in mind. Um, it has to be said, thank you. It has to be said that Albert's um, interest in embryology and in natural philosophy, of course, uh, it has to be framed uh, within his project of commenting on the entire Aristotelian corpus, because in, 12, uh, in 1248, he was entrusted by the Dominican order to found uh, the Dominican Studium Generale of Cologne, where he has to teach his students uh, not only theological disciplines, but also liberal arts. So he provides his students with up-to-date competence in uh, natural philosophy, ethics, physics, metaphysics, commenting on the entire Aristotelian corpus. Um, so in this lecture, I will explore the notion of formative power within this framework of teaching program and uh, um, showing how this notion crosses the boundary between natural philosophy, theology, botany, and all the disciplines that Albert, um, that Albert studied. And um, for this reason, I will uh, divide my presentation in three parts. The first one will be devoted to um, reconstruction, briefly reconstructing the metaphysical and theological background that underlines the notion of formative power. In the second part, I will explore the notion of formative power between uh, with, um, within the, the embryological framework, showing how it works in the formation of the living being. And in the third part, that is the most experimental one, I will show you how the formative power resolves some theoretical tension between in the so-called dispute between a physician and philosophers on the um, contribution of the female contribution in the formation of the embryo. So let's start. Um, when when it comes to deal with such interdisciplinary notion, one somehow have to negotiate with the variable lexicon that is associated with this notion. And we, we cannot find in the Albert's work one single or precise definition of the notion of formative power. And often Albert uses some periphrastic um, phrases or syntax that are related to the virtus formativa. In my research, I, I described the, the various uh, <laughs> of the, the, the various syntax that are related to the virtus formativa. Here you have uh, the most important one and often depends the use of uh, one rather than another, often depends uh, where the formative power is recalled to. For example, uh, the, uh, the potential or attitude of forma or in coatio forma are mostly used uh, when Albert comments on uh, the physics, uh, on Aristotelian physics or metaphysics, uh, while uh, meritum cum quantit, materia cum quantitate or meritum materia are used uh, in the mm, neoplatonic works like, uh, uh, for example, the commentary on the Pseudo Dionysus Aeropagita, uh, the Dovinis Nominibus or something like that. While the, the, the last two one, Principium Plantativum and Virtus Formativa or Informativa, are mostly used both in theological and natural philosophical contexts when he talks about the human embryogenesis. <laughs> Um, so, overcoming this viable lexicon, one can uh, um, outline uh, the basic tenets that underline the, the, the notion of formative power. So, in the physical and metaphysical context, um, um, the formative power is described as a predisposition that belongs to matter and is antecedent to the acquisition of the, the, the substantial form. Uh, prepares the matter to be informed and uh, disappears when the matter reaches the form that is meant to. 
um, is devoid of the ont ontological continuity with the actualized form, but he has uh, what, I, what I call the an analogical bond of suitability, the conveniencia, with the form. Um, in the theological context, Albert is uh, quite often concerned in identifying the origin of the notion of, of the, the, this power, of the formative power. It is also described as a, a formal propensity that uh, um, is proper to the matter and uh, um, that is created and infused by God by the time of creation and is able to, diff to reproduce different virtual content and because it's able to each us, uh, to each of the archetypical model that is in the divine mind. And its uh, formative movement is guided by the divine providence, which guarantees the emergencies of the natural variety of the natural form. And so the proportionality between model copy uh, that, of course, uh, um, um, that are in the um, divine mind. Uh, all these uh, theoretical treatment, both in physical and theological contexts, emerge in Albert, uh, um, in Albert's uh, description and Albert theoretical treatment of the human embryolo embryology, and uh, um, um, and of course uh, um, uh, this notion first has developed in dialogue with uh, medical and natural philosophical issues. One of the most important is uh, uh, the, the 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 problem to conciliate uh, the the epigenesis uh, the, of the human uh, embryo that was, uh, of course, described as a formation of a progressive uh, completion of bodily and psychic function with the Christian tenet of the creatio ex nilo of the human soul uh, that is infused in the embryo only when the embryo is perfectly formed. So Albert wonders what is the principle that is responsible for the very first vital activity of the embryo before the animation. And uh, it is widely held by scholars that Albert's doctrine on human generation depends on this uh, conciliatory approach, as, uh, as we can say. And so to answer to this question, Albert uh, focuses on the dynamic of transmission of uh, um, co and configuration of the living to explain how morphological and functional structure are handed down from parents to child without presupposing uh, the transmission of the soul, of course. So the formative power, uh, sorry, in the Albert's embryology, he is described as the principle responsible for bodily configuration of the embryo, uh, as the principle that performs the vital activities, as I say, before the animation, and cause the similarity in species and form guarantee the bodily continuity between parents and son, and transmit the accidental traits, both somatic and psychic, because Albert, because Albert uh, quite often claims that uh, um, that virtus formativa is responsible for the transmission of uh, some uh, special uh, special characters or temperament from that influences the the the, the, the soul, and. Um, so, um, according to Albert, so the formative power perform an instrumental function as a sort of, sort of proto-nutritive soul that derives that derives from uh, parents, uh, from the parents, from the male's parents. And uh, in order to describe the action of the power, Albert resorts to the analogy with a craftsman who uses tools to shape the product without being being an actual part of the product. So in the same way, by making use of several instruments of the format of, of uh, uh, involved in the generative process, the formative power um, shapes, configures, and uh, distinguish, put in order the body of the embryo without being the actual soul of the embryo. As you can see here, uh, there are the first, the most important instrument of the formative power before the animation, of course, that is the celestial heat, the head of the generating soul and the heat of the uterus. And uh, as you can see, this passage, it's taken from the Summa Theologiae of Albert the Great and not from, uh, from the Animalibus, uh, because in the Summa Theologiae, Albert uh, qu is quite clear, and strangely, is uh, uh, most clear in the Summa Theologiae that than in the uh, in the, the animalibus. So using this power, the formative uh, using these heads, the formative power shapes the body of the embryo without being the soul. 
um, in, um, producing, in, in um, shaping the body of the embryo, uh, the formative powers uh, reproduce step by step uh, the, 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 the power of the soul uh, without being the soul of the embryo, of course, as I said. Um, the first movement, the first step is to form the, those body parts that pertain to the vegetative soul, as you can see here from, from the first passage. Uh, the formative power that is uh, contained in the seed um, um, nourish, uh, digest the, 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 the food and uh, per, um, performs the operaciones vitae, the, the depuration of life, not as being the soul, but as being a sort of an artisan who acts on the embryo without being the actual uh, soul of, the, uh, of it. The second part, uh, the second step of the formation is devoted to form this part that uh, pertains to uh, the, the, the sensitive soul. And uh, only in the case of the most perfect animals and uh, on the, of course, of uh, uh, human beings, the virtus formativa forms those members that are, uh, uh, that pertains, that belongs, that are necessary for the, um, the gen from, from the rational uh, soul. Um, So the formative power is responsible for the transmission of these morphological and functional structures of the bodily parts of the embryo, reproducing the similarity and form with the generating. But how does the virtus formativa acquire the bodily design from the father? What are the material and formal vectors that transmit the structure and functions? According to Albert, the acquisition of the bodily design is the result of a process that begins in the parent's body. The vector of, it, of its transmission is the, 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 um, the seminal fluid. Um, Albert's uh, um, theoretical treatment on the origin of the seminal fluid is uh, quite connected to the notion of formative power. Even though in his De Animalibus he argued in favor of the blood origin theory of the Aristotelian blood origin theory of uh, the origin of the sorry of the, um, the seminal fluid, it does not dismiss um, at all the, the theory of the, the pangenetic theory of the, the seminal fluid. This is uh, based on the, on the logical uh, evidence that uh, given that the assimilation of food is universal and pertains especially the uniform part that constitute the body, uh, it follows that the residue of digestion of nourishment comes from the entire body with the same nourishment has universally, universally nourished. So um, according to Albert, uh, the seminal fluid is the result of the first digestion of the nutritive moisture and the received residue of this process is a humor that contains the virtus assimilationis, as you can see here, is the power of acquiring and preserving the corporeal configuration from the body from which the, 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 um, the, um, the seminal fluid derives. So the seminal fluid is able to acquire the shapes and the, of the organs and also the powers of the organs because it stores the formative power. Um, in order to explain uh, the relationship between the seminal fluid and the formative power, Albert uh, resorts to the, the, the verbs uh, obedire. Uh, that he, uh, he says that uh, given though uh, that uh, um, the, um, the, the, the seminal fluid is a result of the first digestion, acquires the similitudo membrorum, and this is the reason why is the proper subject of the virtus formativa. Uh, and how, in Albert's words, the virtus, um, the seminal fluid, uh, obedi obey its obedience uh, to the, the virtu to the seminal to the virtus formativa that is able to suspish to reduce the form that is contained in the seminal fluid uh, and to transmit it to the embryo. Um, Albert, in, as you can see here from this passage, Albert, of course, claimed that he's um, arguing, arguing against uh, the preferment doctrine. He claims that he's not, this is not because uh, the seminal fluid contains latently the bodily parts of the, of the embryo, but because uh, he has, uh, uh, he's, he's, uh, it is the result of the, the, the fourth digestion where he acquires the, the similitudo membrorum, and uh, because contain uh, because, and 
because it contains the virtus formativa that acts upon this uh, similium tuto membrorum, uh, realizing the project of formation. Mm. Um, so um, let's start. And um, Albert, uh, we have we. Here we don't have time to truly um, to fully um, explain how the formation in the embryo works. Uh, but I wrote several pages of his work in um, trying to localize ex exactly uh, the, the formative power once in, it is in the embryo. And he claims, for example, uh, that, is, um, um, that uh, um, he sets itself, uh, uh, Albert used the Latin expre expression sedes et domicilium uh, of the formative power in the heart of the embryo because it's the first organ to be formed and it's the organ that contains all, um, simultaneously uh, all, the, uh, all the other body parts of the embryo, of course, following the Aristotelian tradition. Um, in all that works, uh, now we start uh, the presentation of the last part of my uh, paper, that is uh, uh, the, 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 the role of the formative power or informative power in the dispute between physician and philosophers on the female contribution in the, uh, to the formative process of the embryo. Um, in Albert's work, one can find several passages where he distinguish between, uh, makes a distinguish uh, distinction between the formative or informative power. Uh, that uh, he refers to the form informative power as a power that refers uh, in function and scopes uh, to the virtus uh, to the male fi virtus formativa, and he, as we are going to see. Uh, ascribe the virtus formativa to the male seed, while the virtus informativa to the female one. Um, whereas most scholastic authors do not seem interested in this difference, uh, for example, in the Vesenian text, you can, or in Constantine the African, you can find uh, the virtus, uh, mostly the syntagm virtus informativa, Albert makes a theoretical distinction between these two, two powers that is uh, uh, connected to uh, his approach, his uh, uh, conciliatory approach in the dispute between physicians and philosophers. As you, of course, uh, all of you know, um, the main according to the um, on the one side physician else that uh, male and female see, uh, male and female emits a seed that is formative and active equally uh, while uh, um, uh, the, the Aristot according to the Aristotelian tradition there is uh, there is just one single principle that is responsible for the formation of the living being and the female offers merely the basic uh, material for uh, the, the, the the formation of the embryo uh, Albert devotes several passages of his the animalibus I'm, I don't remember exactly but maybe uh, 30 pages in in explaining how this dispute works and uh, gives his uh, personal reconstruction of the dispute. And uh, uh, he claims that uh, uh, according to the medical position, both male and female are endowed uh, with the virtus activa formationis, that is another syntax for formative power, and uh, while uh, the male formative power is stronger than female. Uh, according to the philosophical position as reconstructed by Albert, uh, two seeds or two causes, two efficient causes, not, cannot be endowed with the, the same purpose, the same intention as Albert claims. So only the male possesses the virtus formativa, that is the power to form the embryo. Um, Albert's solution. Uh, to the dispute between uh, physician and philosophers uh, is strictly connected to his uh, uh, physics, uh, uh, to his commentary on physics. And here he ah. refers uh, to uh, to the, um, the, the, he claims that the, the, the equivocality, the, the term sperm cannot be univocally attributed to both male and female seed because in the female seed, there is just an, a confused beginning of form. The confusa, a confusa Confusa in coatio forme, secundum passiva potentia. And he distinguished this confusa in coatio with the male in coatio forme, that is, of course, a, a, an incomplete beginning of form, but that has an active potency. Um, 
And uh, here, of course, he used uh, the term in coaxial form, and that, uh, as, uh, as I demonstrated in my PhD uh, research, is an, a, syn a synonym of virtus formativa. And um, yes, I'm okay. And um, Albert clarifies the reference to the uh, virtus formativa, uh, to the virtus informativa as a confusa in, confusa in coatio in a passage where, was, where he ascribed the difference between uh, virtus formativa and informativa to Theophrastus uh, and Porphyry. Uh, it has to be said that neither of them never talk about this uh, notion in the, such terms. And uh, uh, but, uh, uh, Albert quite often and ascribes his doctrine, his own doctrine to other philosophers in order to justify uh, himself. And uh, uh, here claims, of course, that um, um, the formative power is the power to put in order the female confusa in coatio, while the confusa in coatio is uh, again this, um, described as a virtus informabilis, uh, inform formable power. I don't know how to say to translate this virtus informabili. If you have any suggestion, please. But uh, I think that informa informabilis is uh, quite different because informative, of course, but informabilis uh, suggests that is something that uh, could be informed, that is able to be informed. Yeah, informable. Power. Yeah, it's nice. And uh, that is a passive material power in which the form is configured. As you can say here, it's virtus in qua forma formatur. Um, we truly understand the, 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 the role of the formative in, male form, in, informative power in the case study of Windex that Albert is quite interested in, and or of Aventi as they known in the 13th century. And uh, they are, there are the unfertilized eggs that uh, lack the male contribution, at the, but they have the same composition and configuration of the complete eggs. They are alive, as Aristotle claims, since they have the power to nourish and to grow. Um, no, sorry, I have just a few minutes and I want to give you some all the information. Okay, uh, according to Albert, um, Albert resorts again to the distinction between the formative and the formative power in order to explain what is the principle that is responsible for the configuration of the Windex uh, without the, the, the contribution of the male formative power. This time he attributed the, the, uh, the, um, the notion of virtus informativa to Dallin, and, uh, uh, and he claims that the, um, the, the, format, the, the, the Windex um, Vivid, um, pot uh, vivid. Uh, sorry, I think that here is a lot of, I lost uh, vivid potentia plante. Was, was the, the 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 yeah yes, the in Latin yeah okay. Uh, he claims that uh, the the female uh, generally the female virtus informativa is responsible for the gen for the, the 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 life of the the wind egg. Uh, because everything that is uh, able to, uh, to, to, to nourish is uh, um, and uh, able to acquire, even if not uh, yet the soul, is uh, able to, 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 um, to get, to, get to, to nourish, to grow, even if uh, up at a certain point. So the female uh, formative power is able to cause the very first vital activities of the ovum venti, and thus the vegetative soul uh, of the vegetative power of the, the, the ovum venti. Um, so um, in Albert's view, um, this is because the nutritive power belongs to everything that is able to be ensouled, regardless for the actual uh, um, realization of the form. It follows that uh, the exercise of nutrition in Albert's view is independent of uh, the achieving of the natural perfection. And this is quite, uh, quite interesting because at that time, the, the, in the 13th century, all the natural philosophers thought, uh, thought that uh, the, the, the nourishment belongs to everything that is alive and it has a soul, but the, the ovum venti has no soul, but he's able to grow and nourish because uh, he can potentially, it can potentially have this soul, even though he does not realize uh, this kind of uh, form. 
So to conclude, um, the Virtus Informativa uh, plays a pivotal role in number in biology. Here, I just give you some example of uh, the, the, the importance of this notion in Albert Toth, but as, you have, as we have seen, solves the theoretical tension between, between the logical and natural philosophical perspective on the human generation, accounts for the very first vital activity of the living being, and explain the passing down of somatic similarity between parents and children, and of course allows you to explain the borderline cases of generation as uh, the Windex uh, case uh, of, um, that are very difficult to explain without involving the female, the male informative power. So thank you.